Hey guys, Luke here, and in this video I'm going to talk about halogen lithium exchange and something very similar called transmetallation as well. Effectively these two are the same things, it's just using different reagents and displacing a metal with lithium in a transmetallation. And obviously in this case here, that we're going to go through first, replacing a halogen with the lithium. And this is pretty much similar to Grignard's as well, as saw in my first video. Now the reason I'm doing these videos is because I need help myself with organic chemistry. It's my least favourite topic in chemistry and I'm just doing this to help me with exams. So hopefully it helps you if anyone watches this as well. So the general scheme of things is that this reaction is driven by making a more stable RLI species. What is a more stable RLI species? Well a more stable RLI species is either going from a tertiary RLI species, such as tertiary butyl lithium, to a primary one, or going from an sp3 hybridized uh, RLI to an sp2 or sp hybridized RLI. So some telling factors that I've found to look for is using a form of butyl lithium, in our case tertiary butyl lithium we're going to be using for this example, and its attack on an epoxide stroke carbon R, because Grignard's also attack obviously aldehydes and, and carboxyl groups. There are some conditions as well, in this case we're going to be using um, uh, TBDMS which is uh, tertiary butyl dimethyl silicon and we're using that as a protecting group as well. And also TBAF and the reaction is done in THF as well. TBAF is basically used to remove the protecting group. So here's the general scheme of things. We've got our tertiary butyl lithium there, and we're reacting that with a cyclo um, bromoalkane, replacing that with a cyclo. Well, we're basically removing the bromide, bromine, and replacing it with lithium, and then we're forming tertiary butyl bromine as well. Effectively, it's just an exchange. Very easy, very straightforward reaction. But from, obviously, the lithiated form, when we replace the bromine, what can we do from there? So here's a reaction that shows what we can do from there. So, this is an internal heteroatom coordination. Uh, we're going to look for LME, close to the lithium, or N, close to lithium. So an alpha heteroatom for stabilisation. Hopefully that comes with this. So as you can see here, we've got OME uh, there as well. That's how we've got some stabilization. So as you can see in the first step, we just do exactly what we did earlier in the in the basic uh, general scheme. We just replace the lithium with uh, we re we replace the bromine with the lithium. And as you can see there, we're using the silicon uh, as the protecting group TBDMS or TBS. Next, from our intermediate with the added lithium, we attack any form of epoxide. Now, this can be any form of epoxide, as can this be any form of um, halogeno alkane, alkene, or aromatic as well. It's good to have the stabilization like the O or the N as well, as we went through earlier. So, the lithium, like a green yard, can attack an oxygen. It attacks at the least sterically hindered position of the epoxide so obviously there's a lot of room to attack on that side and that pushes some electrons onto the oxygen as well and after work up we form this product here obviously the lithium is gone and what we've got is carbon bonds there instead and the oxygen that was there has like I said, after workup, has been protonated as well. So as I said earlier as well, we use TBAF to remove the um, protecting group. This attacks straight at the silicon, and that breaks the silicon-oxygen bond and puts the electrons onto oxygen. Uh, TBAF, the formula for it is right there. It's four butyls, an nitrogen, and a fluorine and that's effectively TBAF is effectively a way of just producing F minus so instead of writing F minus that's the actual reagent for producing F minus and after that 
Um, we work up again, and where should have been O minus without work up, we've clearly got an OH an alcohol group there instead. So that's just the general reaction there. Now the key nodded view may have noticed that we use two equivalents of our tertiary butyl lithium in this first step. This is because there can be a side reaction or a secondary process that happens. So the first step, we do exactly the same. We make our aromatic lithium again. And the second equivalent can attack the product that we make as well as the aromatic lithium. So this is obviously tertiary butyl bromine. The hydrogen has been drew in explicitly there, and the lithium bond can effectively just attack the hydrogen as well, which displaces the lithium and adds the hydrogen, as you can see in the products. The hydrogen bond uh, donate uh, forms a double bond in one of the positions on the tertiary butyl bromine, and the bromine leaves because it's a good leaving group. This forms a alkene, a alkane, the alkene from this tertiary butyl bromine, the alkane from this uh, tertiary butyl lithium, and then we form lithium bromine as well. Now as I said, we're going to go through transmetallation as well. And transmetallation, like I said, is pretty much the same as doing a halogen lithium exchange as well. The reagents are pretty similar. We've got to look out for a butyl lithium and a carbonyl, in this case we're going to be using an aldehyde and this works by displacing either Mg or lithium with tin, copper, aluminium there's other options as well but we'll stick with those for now and in the case that we're going to do for this example we're displacing tin with lithium so as you can see here we've got a a tin compound just attached to any form of um, any chain really obviously it's a, it's a cycloalkene with some benzene groups attached to it as well not much to worry about there because that could be anything we then use our butyl lithium let's say tertiary butyl lithium for this case and that just displaces the tin with the lithium so from our halogen to lithium exchange we're replacing the halogen in this case we're just replacing the tin. The lithium can then obviously attack in the least directly hindered position of the aldehyde and that pushes the electrons onto the oxygen and obviously the lithium has been displaced now and the chain formed is obviously the chain from the aldehyde added to the chain from the lithiated starting material and in this case as, as well we've just shown this after workup obviously it'd be O minus and you just got to protonate it in this case we've already protonated it as well so the side product to our first step is forming our like I said we're going to use tertiary butyl lithium in this case is forming our tertiary butyl tin and this is hard to remove so there are some advantages of using this and there are some disadvantages of using this over halogen to lithium exchange. The advantages is that uh, tin is stable to purification and storage and tin, excuse me, to lithium is high yielding compared to halogen to lithium exchange. A disadvantage is that uh, the tin is toxic, it's difficult to remove and is indirect as well. Now there are other things that use uh, lithium bonds like carbocupration um, and hydroillumination. This uses aluminium instead. But effectively we kind of get the same thing. So obviously the lithium displaces the chlorine in this, in this case and that just forms a Grignard for sort of reagent, R2CULI for the carbocupration. The R2CULI then attacks the alkyne there on either side and breaks the triple bond to form single bonds and effectively that's all we have there, uh, to form double bonds, sorry. Same sort of thing happens with the aluminium case 
we just replace the hydrogen with aluminium. The aluminium attacks the hydrogen, which then donates a pair of electrons. I mean, it attacks the triple bond, which then donates a pair of electrons to the hydrogen, and then the hydrogen can leave, form the double bond, and the aluminium forms there as well. So that's pretty much it for transmetallation to halogen lithium exchange. Hope it was helpful. Hopefully it's helpful for me. And next time we're going to be talking about some other stuff involving lithium. I think we're going to talk about how to form lithium bonds. So thanks for watching. and I'll see you on the next one.